G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I am adding to my little cuddle range of animals that we've just started. We already have an elephant in this series and today is a beautiful little cuddle pup. And I really have neglected to make a little dog in anything resembling a little cuddle buddy. So it's about time I did that. I will be looking at making one in Sherpa as well. But how sweet is this little guy? And he's got a little bandana that I'll give you as well, made up in the same way as our beautiful elephant. So many of you have done incredible things with my elephant. And you know, the best thing about these patterns is that you can use all of your fat quarter stories. And truly there's so many mixes and blends and so on that you can buy within a collection that really make these really, really special. So I've got your free pattern all ready for you. It's in the description box below. You just need to click on that link and you'll be able to print out your free pattern templates. Do make sure that you set your printer to be printing at either actual size, letter or A4. And always um, talk to me in the comments if you have any printing problems at all, but you should find it's really straightforward. I always give you a measuring bar on your pattern pages. So you can check that your printout is coming out the right size. We need it to all be spot on for great results. I always include all seam allowances in my patterns as well. So you don't have to worry about any of that. So let's get busy making a beautiful little cuddle pup. So let's begin by having a look at our materials and requirements needed to make a little cuddle pup. So I am using, as I promised you I would use, use with this collection, I'm gonna keep it all fabrics. We have so many fabrics that we need to use up. So I am using a patchwork style print and some dark browns and blacks. And that has, uh, I have got my two body back pieces and my two body front pieces cut. And of course they are interfaced with my fusible woven medium weight interfacing. So we need this project to be interfaced because you get a better finish, it's easier to work with overall. So you can see my color scheme that I'm going for there. And then we're going to move on to the arms, which are the arms and the tail, which are going to be added into the neckline. So no joints necessary here, just at the neck. So what we do to make the arms, if you've made my little snuggle elephant, um, you would know that we do these a little differently. We take just fabric on its own, fold it together, right sides together, and we trace around each of those templates with a heat erasable marker. We're going to be sewing directly on those lines, leaving the ends open and then cutting out our pieces. So it's much easier to turn them through. Um, and to stuff them and to sew a good curve that way. So the tail is done in exactly the same way. So I have that ready to stitch traced onto my doubled fabric. Now I'm going for a gray tone. It's still got some interest in it. The fabric still has some interest in it. It's that lovely linen sort of a look and that gray torpy tone is going to work well with my project. We also need foot pads for the bottom and I've pulled that nice chalk color. That is, they are felt with interfacing applied for those foot pads. I do like to add a couple of buttons to the body. You can decorate the body any way you like, but I've added, I just add two in the middle. It makes a kind of a romper sort of a look there and those buttons will work beautifully. So moving on to the head, I really want the head to stand out and be nice and clear. And I also want to be able to see the eyes very clearly. So for my side head pieces, I have chosen still um, a fabric that's got some nice detail in it, but it's very, very fine. So two side head pieces cut from my fabric with fusible um, interfacing applied again. They do have a slash in the head there. That's where we're going to insert the ears. No sewing ears on with this one. So I'm keeping this collection really, really simple. So then we're going to have our centre head gusset. And of course I'm bringing in that lovely grey again. So over the top of the head, there's going to be that nice breakup of grey. And then we're going to need our ears. Now with the ears, I've made mine out of felt. You don't have to. I do think that felt works best for the ears. 
And this is interfaced felt. I'm going with, um, I have interfaced it, it's black interfacing. It's fusible woven interfacing again. So I've gone for black, so it's gonna tie in with the rest of my project. We don't turn these through. So I've gone for felt because of its no fray properties. We will be sewing a blanket stitch all the way around. So if you want to use interface fabric, that's absolutely fine, that will work as well. I just prefer the look of felt on ears. So both will work. We will need some pearl thread for sewing around those ears. I'm gonna bring that torpy color in and that's an eight ply. So that's our ears accounted for. Now, in keeping with the simplicity of this project, I'm going to be using, I don't like, you all would know by now that I don't like um, plastic noses, safety noses. I don't hate the flock ones. So this is a flock nose and it's got a lovely felt sort of finish and it works with my project this time. It's very simple to put in and it's a very sweet little look on this particular dog. So I'll give you the measurements. I think they're a 20 millimeter, this one. Very cheap and easy to find. So your other alternative is you can cover these noses as I have with this one. And I've just taken a, just a circle of fabric, stitched around it, pulled it in around that one there. I've put a coating of my gloss gel medium over that as well. But it does show you, you can coordinate your nose to your fabrics by putting just a single layer of fabric over it. I'm not doing that this time. I'm just going to be using that nose as it is. Of course, you need the clamp for the back as well. As far as eyes go, you can use safety eyes if you wish. Probably around about 10 millimeters is the best size. I'm actually using glass teddy bear eyes here and I'm using them because they're a nice deep smoked amber um, and I do want a bit of color in the eyes this time. These are actually nine millimeter and I'm gonna go with that. They should show up well being that uh, color. Um, but as I said, around about a 10 millimeter if you're using a safety eye will work well. You will need your pearl thread uh, in a color suitable to stitch in. We're doing a very simple mouth line. Of course, your extra strong threads and your basic uh, sewing requirements. So we will be filling with polyester filling, nothing else, so it's very straightforward. So let's begin by starting by making up our tail ready to pop into the seam of our body. And I failed to mention there, you will need your neck joint, which is a 45 millimeter neck joint. And it's the best way to add this head. And if you want to have a look at some jointing options, I'm gonna put the link at the top there for you to have a look at different ways to make up your joints. So let's get started. First of all, we're gonna make that little tail. So as I showed you, we've got a piece of fabric, no treatments on that fabric. We've just got right sides together and traced around that tail. I'm now gonna take it to the machine and I'm going to sew around this whole lower edge and leave this section open. You want to make sure you're really back and forth on your start and finish points. And I have my stitch length set to number two or even a 1.8. So it's nice and small and we only sew it one time. So once you have that seam stitched, you can see I've just cut out that pattern piece, leaving about a four millimeter seam allowance all the way around the edge. And of course, straight down that opening line. So now, if you're using a light fabric, you want to take that back to your iron to remove those marks. I'm not, so that's fine. And I'm just going to turn this one through. You want to make sure that you push out all of those seams, roll those seams out. And now we're just going to add a little bit of filling to this tail, not a lot, because we don't want any filling at the top where we're going to be adding it to the seam. So it's really just the tip but I'm really gonna fill that out nice and firm. It's just a, a very sweet little indication of a tail, just with that jaunty little curve at the end. So really not going to be adding any filling right at the top. So 
So you can see there, a tail section nicely filled out, but this section we're keeping completely empty. So now I'm just gonna to go to the machine and I'm just gonna stitch across that edge just to close that opening. So that completes my little tail. So now we're gonna take our body back pieces. And the first thing that I always do is I sew a close zigzag stitch on my openings. It keeps that opening from fraying and it stops it from stretching. So next we're going to add our tail. So we need to do that. We've got our tail mark here. You want to sew that, remember that you want the little tail curling upwards. You want to sew that so it's centered. So this is our mark. So with this pattern, we use it over and over again. There'll be lots of different animals in this series. Sometimes the tails are just a little thin tail. Sometimes they're wider. If they're wider, we just add them here right in the center. I'm just going to stitch that one in place, just right close to the edge. Okay, so that little tail is in place. In, on right sides together. We're now going to go ahead and put together and sew the center back seam, incorporating that tail as we go. So make sure you're lining everything up and we're going to make especially sure that tail is going to be incorporated into the seam. I'm gonna go right up to that neck edge And we're going to sew a four millimeter seam allowance from the base here through that tail section there to our mark of our opening. Make sure you're back and forth. And then from the top of that opening to what is the neck here. I do sew my seams two times, one right over the top of the other for strength. Um, as I said, it's a four millimeter seam allowance. I have my stitch length set to number two. And there we go, cute little tail poking out that uh, back seam there. So all nice and securely in. I do like to go ahead and press those seams open and flat. It does make for a better finish in the end. So from here, all of these little animal dolls are put together in the same way. I'm going to insert footage now from me making my elephant doll put together exactly the same. It's only the, the, the tail that was different. So we've done that now. Go ahead and get the rest of your animal body put together and then we will come back and we will create this little puppy head. You can now go ahead once you've sewn both those seams and press them open and flat. It gives you a much better finish in the end. So this is our front and our back. So at this stage, you can go ahead and put those right sides together again. And the seam we're going to sew next is that inner leg seam. It's just a very small little seam. And you want to make sure that you've lined up that center point. So perhaps pop a clip in there or a pin. And we're just going to stitch with that same four millimeter seam allowance from the base around. Make sure that you really make sure that that's really nice and secure. So that one two times that same four millimeter seam allowance. There you can see that center inside leg seam stitched and I've sewn it two times. It's nice and strong and we don't clip that seam in dressmaking. You would probably clip that, clip that seam but because in uh, soft sculpture we keep our seams very very small and so that we don't have to clip them because it would definitely compromise that seam um, once we add stuffing we need it to stay together so the next thing i've done before we put this one completely together i've added my buttons for the front i've popped my first one about five to six centimeters from that top neck edge because remember we've got pull in around that joint and you want to leave a little bit of room for a neck ruffle or perhaps a little scarf. So I've got those two there. So now we're going to put right sides together and we're going to sew up those side seams, which of course they will match beautifully. Just popping my clips in there, right the way down the side to the bottom of that leg and we will sew that four millimeter seam allowance two times just the same as before. So the final step in putting the body together is we're going to add the foot pads 
to the, the little base of the leg there. So we're going to put right sides together. It's just like pinning in just a teddy bear foot pad. You can start anywhere because it's a circle. So we're just going to take our pin and we're going to go through all of those layers, flip it over and catch a little bit on the other side. Push that pin head all the way down. This is the easiest way to pin in a foot pad. Start to follow that curve. Pin through both of those layers, flip it over and just take a little bit up on the underside. Pushing the pin head down just clamps it all into place. Just going to make my way all the way around. It'll fit in beautifully if you've kept to your four millimeter seam allowances. There we go, all pinned into place. My next step will be to take my needle with an extra strong thread on it and I'm just going to overcast that foot pad into place so that I can remove all of my pins. So I've now removed all of those pins and you see that little foot pad is, ta is tacked into place. I now take um, some extra strong thread, a single strand with a knot in the end and we're going to sew that foot pad into place using a stab back stitch. I'm going to put the link at the top of the screen there for you to my video that shows you how to sew this stitch but I will show you a couple of stitches here. So I'm coming in from the underneath with my needle and the first thing I'm going to do is just make two stitches, one right on top of the other, just so my start point is nice and secure and nice small stitches. And so now, you see how I'm holding that out flat? I'm coming up from behind and just traveling along the length of one stitch and going back into my last exit hole. So again, I'm gonna come up from the underneath, traveling along a little way, and back into the exit hole. Because it's extra strong thread, we're sewing it back and front. It's the strongest stitch of all for hand sewing in soft sculpture. So each time you just have to make sure you go back into that exit hole so that the stitch is fully linked. And you should be able to create a line that's just as accurate as you would on the machine. So you can see, I'm just gonna make my way right the way around that foot pad and then I will just repeat with the other side. You can go ahead and turn that one through once you've sewn those foot pads in and do take your time to roll out all of those seams, particularly around those feet. So we've got a lovely rounded finish. And that's our body. That's the way we put the body together on all of the animals in this series. Regardless of the tail that you pop in there, they're all put together in the same way. So now we're going to move ahead and make the arms. So the arms in this case, that's one that I've already made and I'm making it in the color that I'm using for the head. So we've looked like we've got a nice naked little arm and this is the romper. So very simple to do, just pop that one aside and bring this one in. So I've got my piece of fabric folded right sides together. I've pressed it nice and flat and I've traced around my template, arm template and I'm going to stitch exactly on that line all the way around. And I do reinforce the lower edge by sewing that section again. Leave that top edge open. Make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish. And then we'll come back to cut that one out. So now that is all stitched, I just need to cut that one out. So straight across the top there. And then I'm going to cut approximately just a four millimeter seam allowance right, right the way around the edge and again we don't notch or trim this seam we don't clip the curves because we're giving it a very small seam we're going to be stuffing this and we don't want to pop that seam open So before I turn this one through, because I used a heat erasable pen, 
I can now take that to my iron and press that and it will remove those marks and then I'm going to turn that through. I've gone ahead and turned that arm through and now we're going to add our filling. Now, just like I have with this one, we pack the end of the arm really, really firm up to about the wrist and then soften off. You can see not much there and then nothing for about the top inch and a half because when we add it, we want the arm to sit nice and soft at the sides. If we fill it right up to the end, it'll stick out. So just go ahead and tuck that filling in that top edge there. In that opening. Easiest with forceps. Take that right down to the base there. Support the end there, but do pack that hand and wrist very firm. Continue up nice and firm and then soften it off and, and then nothing up until here. Once you get up to there, just bring those two edges together and just stay stitch on the machine across the top to hold that all together. Next, we need to go ahead and add those arms to our body at the top of the neck on each side. So you need to first of all make sure that your little hand is curving towards the front. And we're going to take this straight edge here and we're going to line it up with our center seam, sorry, our side seam here. And make sure that it is just exactly halfway. So here's my side seam and we're just going to tack it to the top I'm just using my extra strong thread just to hold that into place, line it up with the top exactly. And it must be right on that seam and centered so that the little arms hang correctly at the side. So these tops of these arms will be pulled in when we put the neck bolt, when we put the head on and the arms will come out from that neck shoulder section. So it's a great way to add these simple little arms. I just got that exactly in place. Make sure it's very secure. Because the top edge here won't be seen, it'll be drawn in around that bolt. There we go. So as we pull that in around the bolt, that little arm will be caught up in that next section. So I'm going to do the same. Make sure you line it up on the other side seam exactly in half and stitch the other one into place. My next step is that we sew a doubled strand of extra strong thread, a running stitch just four millimetres in from the edge, starting at the back, leave your tail ends hanging and so right around that top neck edge, including those arms. So now I've tied my first knot and I'm just going to pull on those thread ends and pull that in. So we want to leave just enough room for that bolt to pass through. So just a small opening there. Our disc is 45 millimeters, so it's going to cover all of that and then knot that off at least four times. So here we are back and this is our puppy body. So the way you've just seen the pink elephant body made up, it's exactly the same and I've got that to that same um, stage. So we can put this one aside and we're going to start working on the head. So before we put the head together, we need to put together the ears. So my recommendation for the ears, they work best if you make them in felt, um, just because of the no fray properties there. So I have interfaced felt, mine is black interfacing. 
and uh, they do need that bit of stability there. What we're going to do first up, we are going to add, well, I have added a little bit of clean uh, dry rice in those ears because I like a little bit of weight there. If you're making this for a baby, perhaps under three years, then just leave that out. Um, but over three years, you can use a variety of things. Mine is just going to be a sample, not given to a child. So I've just put dry rice in there. You can add some very fine beads in there. You could add a little bit of fine aquarium gravel in there, anything to give it just a little bit of weight. Or as I said, just leave them completely empty. So we're going to put our wrong sides together in this case um, because we're not turning this one through. You want to match up all of your edges there. I'm going to leave this section open and we're going to sew in a matching thread a four millimeter seam allowance all the way around that ear. Okay, so now we're ready to sew our blanket stitch. If you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before, I'll put the link at the top of the screen there for you to my video that shows you how. I'm going to start by taking my needle inside and come out through those two layers just at the beginning. I don't start right on the edge because that edge is going to be incorporated into the seam on the head. So that will hold our knot. And you've got a nice guide there with your row of stitching that you've made for your blanket stitching. And blanket stitching is just simply going through all of those layers and bringing your needle out through the loop each time. This is pearl thread. It's eight ply, um, which I think is the best weight for most of this sort of work. And I do prefer pearl thread to embroidery thread because it's all one strand. So you can see there coming out through the loop each time, it's just going to give me that lovely binding stitch that I'm going to work all the way around back to the start. Okay, so that has my second ear stitched and I've gone ahead and opened that uh, top end, just used a little funnel there and added some rice. Now my rice just goes to about here. So just enough in there. And now I'm just going to stitch across here on my machine just to close that opening. We can put those ears aside now and we're gonna get started on the side head pieces. So we're going to put right sides together and we're first going to sew that chin seam before we add those ears. So lining everything up, very important that you get a nice straight chin seam. I'm going to overcast this first so that I do get it perfect. And we're going to be sewing a four millimeter seam allowance from the tip of the nose down to the neck edge. And we will sew that two times for strength. And then I will remove my tacking stitch to open that seam out nice and flat. So there you can see I've turned that through and just press that front seam nice and open and flat so we get a lovely straight lip line there. So our next step is we're going to actually add those ears. So the ears are actually tucked into that little slot there. You want to make sure that this is the top edge that's facing forward so it goes up shorter at the back and they will fit in and leave enough room in that little slot there for you to be able to stitch just like you would a dart. So it's a four millimeter seam allowance and it leaves you just enough room here for a seam when we're sewing the center gusset in place. So you want to make sure that this ear is pushed right the way down, as far down as you can get it into that that little slit that's cut, extend that ear out a little bit so we're definitely sure that it's going to be caught. I'm going to overcast that into place and then securely stitch that two times. So that's how that little darted ear should look. So you just ease off the edge there and that ear is beautifully incorporated. When we pull that back, that's got that lovely ear that's going to fold over and drop next to the side of the head. So, so now we just repeat 
with the opposite side. Just tuck that one in as well. Again, making sure that top curve and get that one stitched into place also. There we go. So that has both those ears nicely tucked into the head. And now we're gonna go ahead and pop in that center nose gusset. This is the most important part of your sewing here that everything is lined up. So I'm gonna take my pin straight through the center nose mark and at that four millimeter seam allowance and also straight through, we're putting right sides together, straight through that center seam that we flattened out. So everything's nice and flat, makes the job easier. And we're going to pin that one each side. I like to go side to side so I know I'm getting it in nice and straight. Pin through all the layers, flip it over and take up just a little bit on the other side. Push your pin head all the way down. It's the best way to pin in our nose gusset. I'm gonna pull these edges up together to meet. Now what we're going to do, you've got a mark here on your gusset and you've got a mark on your side headpiece and we want to match those up exactly. So I find it's best to pop a pin in there now and then we know what we're working with. Working with fabric is a little different to working with felt when you're making animal heads because it's very, very rigid. So you need to do just a little bit more easing than you would with felt. But we're just going to match up those edges right the way around. And you can see that it does all fit right so long as you've kept these seam allowances. I'm going to do the same with the other side and I'm only pinning up to those marks. So you can see that nose section pinned into place. You can see that it's all nice and straight and because we've used our marks, we know that muzzle isn't going to be twisted at all. So now I'm going to take my extra strong thread and I'm just going to overcast that whole section. Then we're going to come back, all our pins will be out and we're going to be able to actually sew that seam. Now that I've done that overcasting stitch, all of my pins are removed. I get, I've got everything anchored in absolutely straight, especially that front junction there. It's much easier now to sew that seam. We're going to be sewing this by hand with a stab back stitch. It's the strongest hand stitching stitch. I'm going to start right on my mark and I've got an extra strong thread, a single strand with a knot in the end. I've come up from the underneath and I'm gonna just take one stitch along in my four millimeter seam allowance. And then I'm just going to do another stitch straight over the top of that one. So this stitch is fully linked top and bottom, which makes it the strongest hand stitching option for creating soft sculpture. If you haven't sewn this one before, I'll put the link to my video at the top of the screen there and you can have a look at that video. But basically we just come up from the underneath traveling the length of a stitch and we go back into the exit hole from the stitch before. Pull that nice and snug. Keep your stitches nice and small and nice and even. Traveling along again and then back into that exit hole each time and you'll find you'll be able to sew a seam that's just as straight as you can on a machine. Fully linked and just a strong top and bottom. Because this section of your little dog will not go under the machine and you won't be able to sew it in accurately. We do sew in the rest of the head on the machine, but this section, it's really important to use this stitch. 
So I'm going to continue on, make my way around. I'm going to do two stitches either side of that center to make sure it's very strong and finish up with my two stitches on this opposite side. Always, always turn that section through once you've stitched it to check that you have caught everything and that that seam is right and that nose section is absolutely straight. And you can see there, everything's lined up and it is. So while we do have access to it, also roll those seams out. All about getting that beautiful finish in the end. So now we're gonna pop that one back through and now we're going to pin our head gusset in, continuing on and all the way over the back of the head to the base of the neck. You need to pull those ears forward so that you have access there. Remember we left just a little space, enough room for a seam allowance, just there. Continue on pinning. right the way down to the back of the head and match up the back of the neck. And so you can see pinned all the way and we're working on the head gusset. You don't do this working on the side panels, always be working on the head gusset. It's much easier to do. If you've kept to your seam allowances throughout, you'll find that piece will fit absolutely perfectly. So now I'm going to go ahead and overcast that seam and then of course I can take this one to the machine and stitch that seam, four millimeter seam allowance, two times. Once that's done, we're just going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And there we go. So I have to actually turn that head through now and I've temporarily just thrown some stuffing in there because now we need to choose our nose position. Now what you have to remember, we're using just a safety flock nose here and positioning is really important. And once you put it in, of course, you can't take it off. So what we don't want is that the nose is sitting down lower than this line here. That would look very odd. You need it to sit right on that seam and to just sit over the top of that seam so it's all brought in together the little nose is perched it's better if it's sitting a little too high than too low so I'm going to make my hole just below that junction there and that will just nicely cover so simply use your awl to pop that hole in there enlarge it with something like a knitting needle unstuff the head and then pop the nose through and add your clamp to the back. Make sure when you're adding that clamp to the back that you do protect that little nose as you press that down. And now that we have that nose nice and secure in place, all that's necessary is that we stuff this head. Now, because we're working with fabric, you want it packed absolutely firm so that you are pushing out all of those wrinkles um, and to get a nice full curved finish. So I'm going to be using my felting needle as I go. You want to really make sure that you focus on the areas here and here and these top curves and of course make sure this nose is all packed out well. We are going to be sewing a little mouth line in. So obviously I start with the muzzle packing in around that nose and work my way up. I will pack it all in with my felting needle, just stop a little way from the edge so that we've got room to add our neck bolt. Okay, so there we go. I've got that head all filled out beautifully there. You can see you need to take the time to fill out all of those cheeks, get those rounded curves. Absolutely no give in that head or that muzzle at all. So filled out right down below here. So now I've taken a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I've started at the back here 
and I've sewn a running stitch, leaving my tail ends hanging all the way around that neck edge. Come back and I've tied my one preliminary knot ready and we're going to pop in that neck disc. Slip that in there, it's a nice snug fit. I've made that whole area nice and flat with my felting needle first. And now I can just draw in those thread ends in around that bolt, just as tight as I can, pushing down with my fingers and pulling that right in, just as snug as I can. And then I will knot that off at least four times. Next step is to add in that mouth line. We're just going to do a simple little curved mouth line. We're not going all the way up to here. So you need to determine the outer edges of your smile on each side. I've got my pearl thread. This is an eight ply. I've got a doubled strand and I'm going to come in from the underneath here. First of all, I'm just going to come in And pull that knot through so that will hold. I'm going to go back into that same hole and then I'm going to bring my needle out at my first point there. There we go, pull that needle all the way through I'm going to make sure that those threads aren't twisted and I'm going to pull those up and determine where I want that to start. So my centre line. So it's probably about a centimetre from the base of that nose and I'm going to dive straight in, straight through that centre seam. Now I'm going to bring my needle out the other side of the smile. And so I'm going to make sure that as I pull that through, I'm going to make sure that those threads aren't twisted. So you actually can place your stitch, pull it up and in, keep my thumb on there, pull those threads, make sure you pull them independently. Nice bit of pull in here. Here's where you'll really appreciate a really firm packed muzzle. And then we're going to dive again into the centre, into that same hole. We're going to come out down the base here and we're going to knot off at the base. Now I can see there as I've pulled that up that I need to just pull that stitch out just a little more, which is why I always thread my needle when I'm doing a mouth or a nose double strand through the end so that I can get out of it. I can pull my stitch out. And I can just re-thread my needle and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to shift that spot just a little. So there is my completed little smile. Now there's some really nice pull in sculpting there. And you can't do that if you don't have a really firm muzzle. If you don't pack it firm enough, when you go to do those mouth stitches, the whole thing's just going to crumple in on itself. So really important, that firm packing. So now we're going to add the eyes. Now, if you're using safety eyes, you would have chosen your position and pop those in at the same time that you did the nose. So you do have to temporarily stuff the head, get your positioning right. And trust me, never just wing it. It will never be in the right place. You do have to get, do a temporary stuffed head first. It's always worth your trouble uh, to get them all in the right spot. But I'm using glass eyes here. So I'm gonna put them in as I always do. I've used my eye tester pins to get my positioning right. And, and then I've made a little hole there with my awl and I've taken that right the way through, creating that little channel there. I've done the same on the other side. So the eyes I'm using are just those nice little amber eyes. 
pretty little amber eyes for a little bit of color. I'm keeping everything very, very plain here with this one. If you like, you could add a patch behind one of these eyes, which would be super cute. I'm trying to keep it all very purist here. And I do like the little dachshund kind of a look that we're getting here. So I've got a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I've now folded it in half again. And I've got two loops and I'm going to pass them through the shank of that eye. I'm going to open out those loops and take the ends back through the loop. Then we've got that nice knot with the eye caught onto it. We then thread this, all of those, onto our large doll needle, which I've already done with the opposite eye. So now we're simply going to take that needle I'm going to follow that path straight through. I'm going to come out really low on the back of the head in the centre. Nice and low. And pull that one all the way through. Settle that eye nicely in place. Check that that's all good. And I do like to tie a knot in this end, it just helps me isolate which eye I'm working with. So now I'm going to thread this eye onto my needle and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to dive in on this side and I'm going to come out of the same hole that I just came out of here. So what you might want to do is just enlarge that hole just a little bit so that it's easier for your needle to find when you're coming through the other way. So both those eyes are in now. Both of the threads are coming out that same hole at the back. I've tied my first knot. What we really want to do is really sink them in. So use your thumbs to press down. You're going to be tightening this as you go. Keep applying pressure as you go. Pulling on each side independently to sink those eyes. When you've got them super tight, you just keep up that tension and knot that off at least four times. We're knotting off into the stuffing of the head, not the surface fabric. So when you snip those thread ends, that little knot will sink back into underneath the fabric and be hidden. And that has a beautiful little head, those eyes set. Now, of course, you can add all sorts to this little dog. You can make him quite patchwork. You can make him like my other scrappy dog. As I said, you could put a patch behind the eye. You could do some little darning stitches on him. You could even add patches to the ears. But I think that this look with this little one I'm doing really shows you that basic little style. And I do love that sweet, plain look. So let's go ahead now. We're ready to add this to the body. So we've got our body all ready. You've got your neckline drawn in, ready for that bolt. It's a simple matter of dropping that through. We're going to get up underneath and add our disc. and our washer and our nut. Just going to finger tighten that and then make sure that I've got everything pulled out. I don't want any fabric caught up and you also want to make sure that those arms are pulling out nice and evenly the side of the neck. Once you're sure that's all good, tighten that up. I like to tighten it until it can just move. You still want it to be able to move. It will slacken off in time. Again, check everything's right. Once you're happy everything's good, go ahead and tighten that up. And then I'm going to take my super glue. Once I've tightened that up, I'm just going to add a drop of super glue in there in the threads of that bolt so that little nut will never come adrift. 
my little pup is all put together now and the last thing we need to do of course is fill that body now you can fill that firm or soft or squashy whatever you like but I tend to start filling down and I fill out these feet nice and firm first then make my way up the body it depends really on the fabric you're using I do still tend to plump mine out nice and firm um, but mine are samples so you may want to make them a little more forgiving if they're going to be hugged and loved and I certainly hope they will be. So I'm going to get him all filled up right to the back. I will use my fel felting needle just to tuck all of that in. Then we're going to come back and we're going to close that opening. My little dog is nicely filled now and now we're going to close that back opening. I've used my felting needle just to tuck everything in there nicely. I've still got some give in that body but all of that shape is nicely filled out. So I've got a single strand of extra strong thread with a whole pile of knots on the end there. I'm going to come in on the underneath at my seam allowance right where that opening begins and bring that through. That knot will hold. We're going to travel straight across to the other side. So I'm gonna flip him around. I'm gonna go straight across and in at the seam allowance of four millimeters and we're just gonna travel down the length of one stitch. So keep those stitches nice and small. And pull that in. Now we're going to go travel back over to the other side. We're going to go into that same first entry hole so that this stitch is all linked. Make one stitch. Pull that through. And as we pull on those threads, it starts to close that opening. We're going to go back over to the other side again. We're going to go back into that last exit hole. Travel down again, keep your stitches even as you go. Give it a squeeze and pull it in. The further you go down, the more that's going to pull in. I do have a video that shows you how to sew this one nice and up close. I'll put the link at the top of the screen there for you. Give it a squeeze and that's pulling in. So it's a bit hard to see when the thread is dark like this. Do check out that video. Most of you have done these openings a million times. I'm sure you're all experts at it by now. So I'm just going to keep working that one all the way down to the base. So this has my little pup almost done. Gorgeous little boy. And you will notice with those arms, when you're putting this one together, when I tell you to leave the, the stuffing out of the top of the arms, it makes all the difference to how those arms fall when he's put together. So you can see that they're sitting nice and loose down at the side. If you overstuff the top of the arm, they'll do this. They'll have the flying arms and we don't want that. And now all of this uh, range, this series, they all look great. I've designed them. They all look great with something around their neck. So with this little guy, I'm going to give him just a tiny mini bandana. Super easy to make. And very appropriate for a little pup. So I've got your pattern template there for you and all we need to do is put right sides together just as we did when we were making the arms. Right sides together and you're going to trace around your shape. There's an opening there, you've got your marks there for your opening. I'm going to take this to the machine and stitch leaving the opening all the way around following that line. Then I'm going to cut this out and leave just a five millimeter seam allowance all the way around, turn it through and give it a good press. So that has my bandana turned through and pressed. And then I've gone ahead and I've sewn just a top stitch around the whole outside. And that also closes that opening that we had there. So our next step, and you'll notice that I've made mine in two different colors. That's because we're gonna fold that in half given it a press. Now you don't fold it to match up, you leave some of this lower edge showing. That way you get to show off two pretty colours there. And then I'm going to just sew a, just a hemline across here. Now you may, what it just depends on what you're using 
to slip through that hemline to tie around your little dog's neck. I'm just using um, some grow grain ribbon here. So I'm just gonna make sure that my hemline will just accommodate that nicely. You might be using something else. You might even have a little tiny collar or a piece of felt will work. Um, so I'm gonna get that pressed and stitched across and then I'm going to add it to my little pup. And so there we go, that completes our gorgeous little pup and I think he's the perfect new addition to this series. So of course we have now, we've got two now, it's number two in the series. So here is Elephant in the same series and we're definitely going to be adding to these. So as you can see, I've just added that little bandana, tied that around his neck just with that little bit of ribbon. We've got that beautiful little tail at the back, super cute. The good thing about the bandana with this one is of course you could personalize these. You can embroider a child's name on them. And of course you can absolutely add all sorts of embellishments and so on. But as you can see, just a beautiful little snuggle pup and definitely I can see him being cuddled by so many. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one and look forward to more in this series. So thank you all for joining me today. I have got my arms full now. Imagine when the, when the whole um, collection grows. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I've got another new series coming up too that's a little similar to this. Um, different body shape again. So I want to have a whole library for you to all be able to access and enjoy. Now, this is the perfect pattern for on selling and you are all most welcome to make product from any of my patterns here and to sell them, whether that be online, at craft markets, so on. This is a particularly great pattern for that because you can personalize them so well. Now, you just can't sell the pattern itself. Now, while we're on the subject of that, I have had the unfortunate news just this week that um, there are a couple of companies in the world who are currently stealing my designs and these videos and they are selling them. They are making a profit from them. And you know, while I just stay positive and move forward and I just try and run faster when that happens, it's certainly not the first time that this has happened. I do really feel for those people who have been conned and have spent money on something that I am giving away freely. And my whole motivation for this channel is that you don't have those expenses. So I'm very upset about that. There's not a lot I can do about it. Um, but thank you to my beautiful followers who have alerted me to that. I have sent some stern emails, which is probably about all I can do. Like I said, I just try and stay and remain positive and I'd be grateful for the people who are with me and who are genuine. So thank you everybody for joining. The best thing we can do in this situation is bring more people to pay it forward because you don't need to pay for these sorts of patterns. They're here freely available to you all. So bring in everybody else, share across your social media platforms, the Pay It Forward channel and let's get more people being creative in times that might otherwise be difficult. So looking forward to seeing so many of you here. If you're watching today and you haven't subscribed, go right ahead and subscribe. You won't be sorry. So I've got a new masterclass project coming up. That's very exciting. I'm super busy at the moment. Do love to hear from you all. Please come and join our Facebook group. I'll put that link down below. Of course, if you want to join my masterclass, I'll put that link down below as well. In the meantime, everybody have a fantastic creative week. Keep on talking to me. You can talk to me via Instagram one-on-one -on -one if you like. That address is across the screen there. So have a fantastic week. Keep on paying all that great stuff forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.